All right, so now I'm going to do a quick video on uh, just the field stripping and cleaning of uh, the XDS-9. Uh, this is Springfield's very uh, compact 9mm single stack. Anyways, to uh, start with, we're going to just show you how to break this thing down. Uh, it's like most uh, semi-automatics. Just uh, First of all, always make sure they're unloaded. So, you know, rack it back, check them sure the magazine's out, there's nothing in the chamber. And also don't have any ammo around when you're doing this just to make sure there's no accident no way that you could actually get around in there and uh, hurt someone so when you lock the slide back of course uh, this is the slide lock here so I uh, press up on that as I pull it back and push it up in the notch to lock the slide back now what you do is you flip this little lever up this is the release. This, I like this on the Springfields. Almost all the Springfields have this. Now, actually, I notice this gun is very clean. It actually, almost has a little bit too much oil in it right now. Uh, so I don't really need to clean this gun, but I'm just showing you guys how you do it. So once you lock the slide back and flip this up, now you can pull the slide back a little bit and the release. Okay, and now the slide will actually, well, uh, once you pull the trigger, you do have to pull the trigger. Make sure it's pointed in a safe direction. You know, we know it's not loaded. Once you pull the trigger, now the slide will the top will come right off. Okay. Now, um, you just want to lay this aside. Now we want to take the barrel out. To take the barrel out, you take this spring uh, spring out. The way you do that is just push, put your thumb here, and you want to push it in this way. Uh, I'm just putting it here to give me some leverage. So push it in, and once you, you just have to push it and compress it a little bit, and then it'll pop up. You pop it up and pull it out this way. Now, the barrel will come out. I just put your finger under here, lift it up a tiny bit and push it forward, okay, and then just lift it and uh, slide it out, and that's your barrel. Okay. Now, actually, I do want to mention, I recommend cleaning, uh, your, I, I think I've cleaned every gun, new gun that I've bought before I shot it. Um, some people recommend it because they can have certain chemicals and uh, compounds on there to keep them from rusting because they don't know how long they're going to sit on the, uh, on the shelf. Um, so I make it a habit of cleaning my gun even before I shoot it the first time. So this is as far as we break it down. It's what they call a filled strip. because You can do it in the field. Uh, this is typically as far as you want to break it down. Now things you want to clean, uh, I usually start with the barrel. What you want to do is, while it's dry, before you put any kind of cleaning compound on it, I normally take a wire brush. Now, this gun came with one. Um, I don't know where it's at. I don't know that I've ever used it. I buy these little kits from Walmart. Um, they're hops, I think, kits. They're like maybe 10 bucks or something like that. Now, I've got some extra, extra junk in there, but they come with uh, these wire brushes. Just make sure if you're cleaning, if you're going to clean your 9, get one that supports a 9mm because it'll have a brush the right size for your, your barrel. It also comes with typically some pads, uh, cleaning pads, and then also some brushes and also, anyways, just different things. So, pick up one of those. I take the wire brush and I run it through my barrel a few times. Okay. Um, why I do this dry is what happens is, in, why I use the wire brush is, you can have uh, bits of jacketing, so the bullets, you know, are typically jacketed with copper, and you can run them through. So as you're shooting, that the jacketing from the bullets can actually come off and uh, leave themselves in the groove. You know, the barrel is rifled. You can see those spirals in there. That parts the spin as the bullet goes through. It's actually squished out the barrel because the, the bullet itself is actually just a tiny bit uh, bigger than those grooves and it actually gets squished through the barrel and as it gets squished through there it gets um, it spins that or those grooves actually cause it to spin around and as it spins that's what helps it stabilize as it flies through the air kind of like a football with a good spiral will travel a, a straighter path than one that's not so but as it goes through as that bullet is squished through those that rifling it can leave parts of the jacketing behind, some little pieces of copper. Uh, also, if you're shooting lead cast bullets, like I do a lot, sometimes the lead can get in there. Now, actually, with these little, these small barrels like this, this is three, what, 3.3 inch barrel, the XDS, I rarely have anything in there. Uh, but still not a bad idea, you scrub it through. I mean, I shouldn't say I don't have anything in there. I don't see much. Normally, I'll like put it over a white t-shirt or something like this and run it through. And, 
lots of times I'll actually just push it through and uh, unscrew it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm kind of anal like that. I don't like to pull junk back through it. Um, but anyways, once you do that, or once I do that, what I typically do is I would take something like the CLP cleaner. This stuff is pretty cheap. Uh, you can get it at Walmart. Uh, it's, it's a cleaner lubricant preservative. Um, I take it and I spray it in the barrel, and especially on the feed ramp here. Um, and then what I'll do is take some of these gun cleaning patches. Normally, like I said, some of them come with the, uh, the kit from Walmart. I'll take some of them, make sure they're a little wet. I might spray them a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll put this uh, other attachment on. Basically, this is this is for the 9mm. Um, it will... I'll show you here. So I'll take one or two of these patches, and I normally like fold it up into fourths. Put it on the barrel like this, and again, once I sprayed it down, and then I shove it through. Okay, and you want it to take a little bit of force so it gets in those grooves. Okay, and then it comes out. You can see, even though this thing's clean, it's got a tiny bit of uh, black on there. That's actually super clean. Now, after you've been shooting a while, they'll come out real black because not only can you have some of that copper jacketing and stuff like that, but the powder, the burnt powder, is uh, the, the biggest thing you, you want to get out of there because that burnt powder sitting in your barrel can actually can over time cause it to rust. Then uh, after I do that a few times, I'll, I'll, I usually use a couple of these little patches and run them through until I get it pretty clean. And Occasionally I'll take a patch like this and uh, put another full one on top of it, not folded up, to get even a tighter fit down through there. But then you also want to take a patch and clean the feed ramp really good. You see this is a nice polished uh, feed ramp polished by Springfield. I didn't do anything with it. But you want it nice and clean because this controls how your bullets, your cartridges, but the bullet would actually hit that and slide up into the ramp. And so if this is not clean and smooth, then it could cause a failure to feed. Basically the, the round would get hung up in there and not allow your gun to operate properly. So make sure that's nice and clean. Then I also just wipe around here really good. Now sometimes, I want to be super thorough, I'll use a toothpick as well. Um, I'll take a nice wooden toothpick and I'll take my thing and I'll push it around the edges to make sure I clean out. You can kind of see there's some some sharp uh, corners in here. Not sharp as to cut you, but just uh, grime and grit and stuff can get in there. So I use a toothpick. And um, one reason I use a toothpick versus like a screwdriver, you don't really want to use something metal, hard metal, because you can scratch the gun. So using something hard yet, you know, softer than the metal, like a toothpick or something wood like that is great. And also these brushes are typically copper brushes too, so it's a softer metal. So you don't want to put like steel brush through here or anything like that because it can, uh, say can, it probably wouldn't, but it can, um, you know, damage the barrel actually, at least scratch it up some. So um, the outside of the barrel usually doesn't get that dirty, but I do just go ahead and wipe it off. Uh, now to complete, just to totally complete the barrel, once it's clean, uh, what I would do, I mean you've run these patches through it, I would take something like this Remington oil, again you can get this stuff at Walmart or any gun store, uh, I would spray it on some patches, or sometimes I spray it directly in the barrel, and then just run it through just like you did earlier to clean the barrel. Just run those through with the oil on it, uh, run it through a few times, then take a dry patch and run it through again like that, because you don't want to leave a lot of oil. Now you want oil on your gun so it doesn't rust, your parts don't rust. I mean over time they really can rust if you don't keep them oiled. Um, but uh, you don't want too much oil because too much oil will attract dirt and grime and cause other issues. So then you've got the slide. Now what I'll do is spray some more of these cleaning, these swipes, use again the CLP. Um, this is really all I'm going to use, these two products, the CLP and the Remington oil. There are other things you can use too, but uh, those are the two I, I like to use. Uh, with that, again with a, a cloth here, I would rub it down in here, just try to clean off any the gook and grime, and also down in these, these grooves where the slide runs along uh, the bottom part of the gun. The slide runs across through here, there's these little grooves in here. Now what I'll do is, again, lots of times I'll use the toothpick, 
I'll fold one of these cloths up over a couple times and push the toothpick in there. Now, I'm really anal. I mean, a lot of people don't do go through all of this, and you don't have to. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, I do maybe a little overkill. But I actually kind of like cleaning my guns too and having them nice and clean. So I'll run that cloth down through there and down on there. And uh, here's the part I, I spend more time on is the, the bolt face. You can kind of see it down in here. Down here. So this bolt face, this is of course where the, the back of the cartridge, the case is up against and that's where your firing pin pops out of to, to charge it. And so this gets kind of black here. So again, I'll just use one of these cloths and I will use a toothpick to help rub it to get those in those edges and those corners and those crevices uh, just around. Another thing I do try to do is get under this. This is your extractor right here. This is what wraps around the, the brass, uh, the little lip on the back of the, the case. And as the slide rips back, this extractor pulls the case out and helps it eject. Actually, it does it facilitates the ejecting of the, the spent casing, the, spent, the empty brass. Um, you can see it is spring-loaded. It's kind of, I mean, it's really tight, but you can push it back and forth. That's so as it comes, as the round is in the barrel, let me put the barrel back in here. Okay. Um, as your, your slide comes back, a cartridge is put into here, and as the slide slams back forward, this extractor here Will, will come out and around the back of that case and then grab hook onto the back of it. So now that extractor is hooked onto the back part of that case. So now after it shoots, and after you pull the trigger, it shoots, you know, that forces the slide back and that will, that extractor will be holding onto that case. So as it comes back, it flips it out, flips it right out of there. So I just make sure I clean in there around in, behind that extractor because if you've got gunk in there, you could potentially cause it not to extract properly, uh, but anyways. Um, so then just wipe everything down again. Then what I would do is again, uh, use the, the rim oil uh, or any kind of oil, not any kind, any kind of gun oil. Spray it again on a clean pad, uh, wipe it down in there, and uh, also down in these, these little grooves. Now a lot of times what I'll do too is uh, I normally have the little, yeah, one of these little guys to help direct the oil. And I'll sometimes put just a dab, I mean just a tiny, almost like a drop. Actually some just came out and I didn't even spray it, but there's a little bit um, poking out. But I'll just barely touch that. And then just put a little bit, actually got too much in there. Now what I'll do sometimes is put the gun back together just briefly. And so I got a little bit of oil in those grooves. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually rack this back and forth a little bit to work that oil in. So, oh, and this is how you assemble it. You pull the slide back and you lock the slide back again and you just push that lever down. So uh, once you put it back together, you just flip that down. So now you're gonna, I'm just going to rack it back and forth a few times. Okay, lock it back again, take it back apart. Okay. And now that oil will be worked a little bit down through those grooves. I might, since I put too much on there, um, you know, take a take another pad, clean one, and just wipe down through there and make sure I get the excess off. So you want it lubed, but again, you don't want too much uh, wetness. The way I get it is uh, barely, I mean, you don't want to see it wet, wet. I mean, you really don't want to see it too wet at all. I mean, you just want it to be smooth. So I'll take one of these pads and uh, try to dry it a little bit. Now, what I will do sometimes, too, is also just touch these little points. You can see after you, you've used your gun a little bit, you get a little bit of wear. And so it kind of helps you see where the slide actually rides on that. Okay. I'm just barely putting a little bit on there. Okay. And I might wipe some of that off. Again, you want enough to lubricate it, but you don't want to try dirt. Now here's another thing. Uh, notice the top of my barrel. Now I've had probably almost a thousand rounds through this gun. 
and uh, you can see this is normal normal wear. So what happens is as that slide comes back and forth, it rubs across there. So I always make sure you want a little oil on there. That just helps make sure it'll feed reliably. So I just spray a little bit of oil on there, and sometimes I rub around with your finger. Okay. Um, don't do as I do. You should wear gloves. According to the NRA, you should always wear gloves and not do this with your bare hands. But uh, anyways. So I rub that oil around on there. Now actually I will say one thing about wearing gloves. You actually do have oils on your hand that are not good for the guns. So uh oops, sorry. So yeah, you might think of it as wearing gloves, like you know, latex gloves is not protecting you as much as maybe protecting your gun. <laughs> that might inspire me to wear some gloves. I do wear gloves sometimes when I'm reloading to keep my oils off of my, my brass. But um anyways, I will leave if I leave anything wet that actually looks wet, I sometimes will leave the top of this a little wet. Because first of all, dirt doesn't get too much on there as you're shooting. Um, that's on the outside. Now I'm using a, an old t-shirt uh, to wipe the excess off. Okay. But I sometimes will leave the top of that a little bit wet. And uh, if I can get my hand out of the way, you can see how that slides and it rubs back and forth on there. That's why I leave that oil a little bit to make sure I got smooth feeding. And also you see the barrel, it's still a little wet. And I don't mind leaving that a little wet looking because it doesn't get dirty. Um, pretty much everything happens inside of here and the outside isn't really exposed to those burning powders or gases or anything like that. And uh, you'll find after you shoot it a while you'll see what parts get dirty and attract dirt and what parts don't. So, that is how I clean it. Now I will say I forgot one thing. Let me take it back real quick. Uh, down in here, I also will just wipe these off. Again, spray a little CLP on your cleaning pad, rub it down here, and as you saw, uh, oil, oil some of the parts. And I will sometimes take a, a, a lightly oiled cloth and rub down through here. And sometimes you can use an old t-shirt um, as well as your oil rag. That works out well. So, then just put it back. Um, Pull it back and lock that up. Now be careful. If you don't, if you pull it back and don't push that up, uh, it can shoot off, uh, slide, go flying off of there. Make sure you push that back down, and now it's good to go. Just wrap it a few times. Make sure you got it assembled properly. Point it in a safe direction. Pull the trigger. Make sure you fill that click. Okay. Always again point it in a safe direction. Now actually, where the gun is pointing right now um, is to the outside. There's not any other rooms beyond the room uh, I'm pointing it at. So always be aware of where you're pointing the gun and what's beyond uh, even the walls that you're pointing the gun at. But uh, I think that's it for uh, disassembling and cleaning XDS.